with the first of the year falling on a Saturday, uh, their first of the month, I should say, uh, there were a few questions with regard to when men's breakfast was. I've tried to get out of the habit of, uh, of reminding uh, guys for the last 25 years that we have a men's breakfast. Um, but this month, we're going to get a little break. It is on Saturday. Amen? I, there was some question last week if it was going to be last week because we were well into the, the 20s already and it wasn't time for men's breakfast yet. This Saturday. Turn with me to your Bibles this, this evening to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5. Those times of fellowship are good times and we <clears throat> should value all of them. We schedule a few <clears throat> meetings such as this, home fellowship group meetings, times of prayer. Uh, but we should be a people always gathering on a real regular basis. And so much the more as we see the days of the Lord's return approaching. Amen? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this is a verse that we spend a little bit of time on on Sunday, and we return to it. We change topics a little bit, but I thought it would be a, a good transition into the one that we want to talk about, where in verse 5 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, the scripture reads, And the Lord direct your hearts, into the love of God, into the, in, into the patient waiting for Christ. It is the Lord who is at work in us, and we are very thankful for that. Amen? God at work in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We know we're commanded to love him with our all, and we also know that we can't. We don't do a very good job of loving, with him, loving him with our all, do we? Thankfully, he is teaching us to do so. You mindful of that? Yep, we should be mindful of, of that being his desire, that we would love him more, always for our benefit, he gains nothing from our devotion, our adoration. He doesn't gain anything from our, uh, our, us giving our all to him or giving some of our time to him. We're always the beneficiaries, aren't we? He is the consummate giver, and we, frankly, are utterly dependent upon him. And that's the way he has ordained things. He's God, and we're made by him. We should be a people uh, who grow in our awareness of his goodness and seek to get to know him more. Amen? to grow in our love for him and the knowledge that we have of his love for us and into the patient waiting for Christ. <clears throat> and here, <clears throat> I'd like to tell of a couple uh, a bit out of the ordinary conversations that I had with individuals this afternoon. They were to me strangers before we started talking. <clears throat> Marianne and I were out on a couple errands. Um, uh, the first conversation was in the, the market at Costco. <clears throat> And we round a corner, as did a, another gentleman. And um, uh, neither Marianne nor I were wearing masks. And, um, and we came upon one other individual in the store who was not wearing a mask. And his face lit up and he said, hey, I like your mask. <laughs> well, I said in response to them, yours is ugly. <laughs> he came over and wanted to shake my hand. I said, whoa, whoa contact with another human being, you know? And, and, and he said, yeah, out in public even. <laughs> he wanted to shake Mary Ann's hand. He proceeds to ask, did you get vaccinated? I said, no way. He gives me a big hug. <laughs> Hugs Mary Ann. <laughs> he said, and you know what he does then? He says, look, I'm carrying. <laughs> He's not serious. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not yet. <laughs> it was a kick. And, um, not, not a Christian man, but just somebody who's, you know, who's <clears throat> had it up to here. But for all practical purposes, you'd look at the guy and think he's just a regular guy. And you go away from, from that, you know, chuckling, of course. <laughs> but I'm um, thinking... Man, oh man, you know, uh, you could almost sympathize uh, with somebody uh, who doesn't run into somebody regular uh, a little more often. You with me there? Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you walk into these places and you feel like, wow, they're all zombies. And I'm, you know, like I'm the only one that, that's, that's thinking straight. You know, you, it, it's... It's almost surreal. Are you with me there? 
<clears throat> well, we weren't done at Costco. <laughs> We're waiting for the tires, the, the car, you know, to, to get finished up, putting some, some tires on. And um, <clears throat> um, Marianne and I were just having a casual chat on alignment, you know, um, camber, caster, and tow. And, <clears throat> and, um, and uh, the, uh, there's a guy that's standing there, and his mask is under his chin. <clears throat> and there was, this, is, this is yet a, a, a fourth, you know, person that was at Costco today without a mask on. <clears throat> and um, and he, he just overhears the conversation. He wants to, you know, just sort of join it in a friendly kind of way. You know, there's a, they say that, you know, they got to get your cameras aligned on your cars nowadays so that you get the proper reading and sensory information for, you know, stopping, um, the automatic stopping and things like that. And, and, um, and I noticed that his, his shirt was a Christian T-shirt. I said, are you, you know, I, I see your T-shirt. Are you, are you a born-again Christian? He says, yes, I am. Well, from there on out, it wasn't a conversation uh, much about, well, it was, it was a combination. A lot about, you know, the virus, but then some about the Lord, because he talked of, you know, the, the, the church that he had been in central New York, Syracuse, not too far from where I grew up, and he used to play, you know, a guitar in the youth ministry there. And this is a guy that's in his, you know, his probably, you know, maybe early 50s, um, and uh, left there recently, uh, just couldn't stay any longer for all the attention that was given to the, the socially popular issues and just look, looking to be so palatable to the masses. And uh, he's been down in this area for, you know, for close to a year now. And, and uh, it didn't sound like he'd put out much of an effort at, at going to church. It just sounded like, you know, he'd checked out a few places and was wondering if there was anybody out there. And uh, he was, you know, he was, wasn't too far into the conversation where he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on out and visit. He has, he actually had to go back up to New York for, for some deaths in the family this weekend. But he says, I'm coming out to visit you. He was glad, glad to take our information and uh, give me his and invite, us to, invite me to, you know, shoot him a text. And, um, but uh, again, just in both cases, it was so pronounced of how uh, unsettled uh, these individuals were with regard to the condition of the world and in the, with the, the, the latter conversation, the condition of the church as well. And, uh, <clears throat> and I know I don't get out as much as you all do. <clears throat> uh, but these aren't isolated individuals in that uh, you know there are plenty of people out there that are thinking the same thing and feeling it. And you know that that is something that we've continued to talk about here. <clears throat> because while according to, you know, to Peter, we are a peculiar people, right? <clears throat> a, a chosen generation, uh, a royal priesthood, right? a holy nation, a peculiar people. Um, we're peculiar uh, for different reasons. But yeah, we do things differently because we do things according to the word of God, don't we? Yeah, we do. And uh, <clears throat> we have got to continue to keep Jesus in clear focus. That's what I tried to keep coming back to with the second gentleman. Because uh, the concern was in the brief conversation that he was maybe a little bit too caught up and concerned about the course that the world was taking. We don't stick our head in the sand and pretend that it's, you know, still just uh, Disneyland around us. No, we read the signs of the times, but we don't get sucked up into what's going on in the world where we're all anxious. We don't let our hearts become troubled, do we? No, we look up, our redemption is drawing nigh. We're mindful of being about the master's business, living consecrated lives, living uh, as servants of the Most High, Building up the body and, and purifying the bride in preparation for Jesus' soon return. And out, we're out propagating the gospel. Seeing if we can be used of the Lord to gather in some souls in these last days. Amen? Now, <clears throat> that's not the main emphasis of what we're talking about this evening. <clears throat> but it applies to us. It it, it's just one of many reasons why we need more of Jesus. Why need, we really need to stay very close to him. 
We need to draw near to him. We need to get to know him more. No healthy Christian ever thinks in terms of just having their fire insurance paid on up. Healthy Christians are in pursuit. Healthy Christians are hungry for more of Jesus. They want to know him more. And they take a look at this world and, and, uh, and they turn their back on it. Oh, they don't, they, they don't turn their back on it in the sense that uh, let them all go to hell. No, we're not attracted by the things of this world. We see it as a mission field. We're on a pilgrimage. We're passing through. Our stay here is brief. And we're servants of the Most High. Amen? Amen. And we have our fair share of troubles in this life. We can be, you know, endeavoring to do our level best not to get caught up and ensnared by. And hardships come. Difficulties <clears throat> come knocking at our doors. We need more of Jesus. Need to keep heart and mind stayed on him. Need to keep in fervent pursuit. Can't lapse back into any kind of casualness. There's no cruise, cruise control for the Christian. No autopilot for the Christian. We were in battle. We're in pursuit. We're staying hungry and thirsty for more of him. Amen? And yes, thankfully, <clears throat> Jesus is doing that work in us. And we're, yeah, we're patiently waiting for Jesus' return. <clears throat> the first part of of, uh, of our time together, I'd like to just touch on a number of, of passages of Scripture that deal with Jesus being our all, our life, uh, the one who has loved us with an everlasting love. Good reasons to get to know him more. Amen? I mean, you think of the, of the diversity of human need that you face right now, right before you right now. Could anybody use a stronger marriage? Some help parenting. <clears throat> Maybe some of you young people could, could uh, use uh, some help with being kids. <laughs> Maybe uh, you recognize areas of your life where there needs to, ought to be greater holiness, greater consecration. Maybe you're dealing with sickness in your body, difficulty in your finances, uh, persecution on the job, whatever it might be. And yes, like uh, uh, <clears throat> Jim reminded us over the weekend, uh, what's the right answer? Where do you go for help? Say it, please. Jesus. Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Do you need peace? Where might you go for peace? Need some joy? Need some strength? Need some courage? Need healing? Need, you know, need some wisdom on how to make some sense out of your, your, your affairs? It's found in Jesus, isn't it? We need to get to know him more. And that is not, again, that's not just the, 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 the trite saying, get to know Jesus more. That's a sound biblical admonition, isn't it? Here he says, <clears throat> I go to 1 John chapter 5. Verses 11 and 12, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. Well, we're thankful for that. You're not going to die and spend forever in hell. You've passed from death unto life. He says, this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Don't limit your understanding that this is just having been regenerated or applying to regeneration. This is the abundance of life that God intends us to walk in. He has provided it for us. Should we not be a people who are partaking of it ever more fully? He says, this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Do you want life? Any aspect of life. Strength and, and yes, uh, a more disciplined life, you know, that you'd be able to uh, manage your, your, your time, your affairs, you wouldn't be so lazy, you wouldn't be so inconsistent in your commitments. Uh, life is in his son, in Jesus. In 
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus invites us, doesn't he? In verse 28, he says what? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the door is wide open, isn't it? He's the source of life, all that we have need of, all that we have need of. And he says, come. The invitation is a standing invitation. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Sadly, I think most would testify from personal experience that we have to be brought rather low sometimes to recognize that we would fall into the, you know, laboring and their heavy laden category. And we're sort of forced to come to Jesus. How low do we need to get before we come to him? How bad does it need to get? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Look to him, call on his name, fellowship with him. Get to know him more. Get to know him more. <clears throat> In <clears throat> John 17, verses 1 through 3, these words spake Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. That's where, that's where life is found. <clears throat> We go through our days. We have matters to take care of. It is just the business of life that, that is very consistent with the plan of God, the overall plan of God for us. You know, we get up in the morning, we take care of household responsibilities, we go off to work, we, we come home again, we take care of different things around the house with family, we get together with the body and we take care of different things up here at church and just the business of life. And God's got grace for all of that. All of that. The up, through the ups and through all the downs. He says, this is life eternal that they might know thee. So we're not just talking about, uh, we're not just talking about getting born again, coming into a, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. No, life continues to proceed from the Son as we get to know him ever more. Amen? There's a whole lot more life that the Lord has for us. As the more we get to know him, the more life we partake of. The more we get to know him, the more life we partake of. How much life do you want? Do you stay hungry? Do you stay in fervent pursuit? How easily are you satisfied? How easily is you know, the appetite for the, the Lord appeased and you go off and feed the flesh again? This is life eternal. This is what life is all about. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 says that it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness dwells in Jesus. Jesus is not just there to satisfy a troubled soul. <clears throat> you know, we're multidimensional beings. And so we've got Jesus for the religious side of us. The rest of, the rest of our, our existence we take care of. In him all fullness dwells. All fullness dwells. All that we have need of, spirit, soul, and body, found in Jesus. How convinced are we? How fervently we, do we pursue? How, how, how strong is the longing and the desire to know him more? He does want to know you, doesn't he? He does know you, and he wants you to know him more. That's what we should say. He knows us. He wants us to know him ever more. In John 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that, abide, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. John 14, of course, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Passage is well familiar to us, well loved, because at least at some point in time, they've really hit us like a ton of bricks, haven't they? 
Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. That's what life is all about, getting to know him more. He's the truth. This world, the devil will lie to you, deceive you, distract you. Jesus is the truth. And there's no way other than his way. His way is the way, the right way. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Paul in witnessing there on Mars Hill, Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Are we aware of that? That in him we live and move and have our being. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14, <clears throat> through 19. <clears throat> Paul speaks of the, the, the kind of prayer that he prays for the people of God. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Could you stand to be strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in your inner man, that Christ would dwell in your heart by faith? Hmm. Well, he desires to dwell there ever more fully, doesn't he? He desires to dwell in our hearts ever more fully. <clears throat> that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints... What is the breadth and length and depth and height? And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Interesting the way those truths are coupled. <clears throat> Knowing the love of Christ that passes knowledge uh, results in you being filled with all the fullness of God. When you know the love of Jesus Christ, oh, it's not just know about it, know that he does love you, but know in, in experience then you're partaking of God's fullness, all that, all that you need of. You ever stop and think about uh, the practical, uh, the, the practical implications of really believing that God loves you? I mean, as purely and perfectly, how might it affect the way you live? We're, we're concerned. I mean, naturally, we're concerned about what other people think of us, aren't we? Right? But when you know and believe the love that God has for you, that's a non-issue, isn't it? Yeah. We take thought for our lives, you know, what we'll eat, drink, where we'll be clothed, to varying degrees, don't we? But when you re if you really, 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 really believe that God loved you, I mean, <laughs> God Almighty loved you and was there to take perfect care of you, would you ever take thought for your life to the smallest measure? Now, we talk of principles, but when it comes to practice, the way we really live, the things we really got to deal with, we have to conclude that we got some more to learn about the love of God, don't we? We got to grow in our, our belief of the love of God. Anxious for anything about what the future might hold? Where's the, where is there any place for anxiety about what tomorrow may hold? Hmm? Perfect peace belongs to the one who is filled with the knowledge of God's love for them. Amen? For in him all the fullness of, uh, of the Godhead dwells. And God wants us to be filled with all his fullness. Amen? Colossians chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 9 through 11. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. <clears throat> when we talk about knowing God, we're sure not just talking about knowing about him, are we? Do we? No. Nope. I, <clears throat> you know, though, though God knows how many hairs are on my wife's head, I've been married to her for a long time, I don't know how many hairs on her head. Imagine that. Something as common as that, and I don't even know how many hairs she's got in her head. That's my problem. Hmm? But I know my wife. We're not just talking about data and information when it comes to about knowing God. 
Right? You with me there? We know him in a relationship. That's his desire, isn't it? Yeah. He wants us to know him, and he wants, <clears throat> he wants us to know him in intimacy of relationship. Not just uh, growing in our knowledge of where the verse is found that says this and that. He wants us to know him personally, doesn't he? Yeah. That's where life is. That they, they, we might know him, the true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's take this approach. <clears throat> I brought along a, a number of points. That we would know him <clears throat> as the one who made us. Know him as the one who made us. We'll just take a look at knowing God <clears throat> at, from a number of different perspectives. We want to get to know Jesus more. We need to get to know Jesus more. <clears throat> In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, this, <clears throat> the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And then also in Colossians, chapter 1, 16 and 17, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Get to know God. is just thinking about getting to know him. Know him as the one who made you. You're not an accident. You're not an accident. I know we're, you know, we, we, we can feel lost in the crowd sometimes. It's difficult for us to imagine God knowing personally, intimately, multiply billions of people. But let's not uh, put on God our own limitations. Just because I can't know seven billion people closely doesn't mean that he can't. He does know you. He made you. He made you. Very, very purposefully, very deliberately. Think about that. As you think about getting to know God more, know him as the one who made you. He formed you. He fashioned you. Perhaps you'd just think about how, how, <clears throat> uh, 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 you know, how awesome his power is to be able to, to create human life. Jim was talking over the weekend about the witness that we have in, in creation, the witness that God has left us in, in uh, the heavens declaring the glory of God and the firmament showing his handiwork. Amen? But God made you. No one is the one who, who made you powerful God, but also a personal God. Amen? <clears throat> know him as the one who knows you. We think of how the Lord called Jeremiah, don't we? Where he says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before you were born, he knew you. God didn't make any mistakes. <clears throat> we, uh, we sometimes would think of, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> wanting to be other than what we are like. You know, the, the person that's, that's, um, that's a little too tall would like to be just a little bit shorter. And the person that's a little bit too short would like to be a little bit, a little bit taller than they are. And, and then, um, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the curly-haired one wants to be straight-haired and the straight-haired one just wishes that they could be curly. And, you know, why, why couldn't I have blue eyes instead of brown eyes? And, and, you know, and I always wanted brown eyes instead of having these blue eyes of mine. And it's the kind of thing that people deal with. And it goes beyond that, obviously. The, the, it's the Lord that made us and, and knows us. And, and he's, he's pleased. He likes you. That's why he made you. Not a mistake. 
Not everybody is, we, 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 you know, we talk about the body, the way it's, it's fashioned, and, and not everybody gets the, gets the same things, do they? And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. He knows you, and he's not disappointed. He doesn't look, oh, okay, well, yeah, I know you, you're part of the family, but these are my favored children. No, no, it's not like that with God, is it? So as you get to know him, get to know him for what he's like. And this is not, this is not just, a, a, again, a, a feel good about myself uh, session. This is getting to know God, okay? He knows you. And it's a good thing for us to come to grips with that. He knows who you are, knows who you're not. He knows the things that you're dealing with, with regard to sin in your life. He knows you. No, nothing hid from him is there. Nope, knows your struggles or uh, your lack of effort in dealing with, uh, the lack of struggle in dealing with uh, carnality. He knows all that. And he's still a God who loves you and calls you by his name, isn't he? All things are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do, aren't they? Yeah? The fact that he knows us and still accepts us should never be used as, a, as any kind of, even the smallest justification for continuing in our uh, weak or sinful way. We're thankful for his mercy and his long-suffering, but the fact that he's merciful and long-suffering doesn't uh, give us license to continue in our wickedness, does it? But when we know that he knows, no hiding it, knows what I'm dealing with, knows who I am, knows who I'm not, could have destroyed me already for my repeated failures, for my carnality, for my immaturity. Could have done so if he wanted to, couldn't he? But he hasn't. He knows me. And evidently he's not done with me yet. These are good ways in which to get to know God, real practically. Aren't they? We're not hiding anything from him. He knows who you are. Knows where you are. No hiding out. Think these thoughts about God. Get to know him. Talk with him openly. Okay, God, this, this is who I am. You know, and, and, and talk to him openly about, well, if it's confession that needs to take place. But this man didn't think he was worthy, didn't he? Jeremiah, no, I can't do that. I'm just a child. I don't know how to speak. And the Lord went and told him, you know, don't say I'm a child. You'll go and do what I tell you to do, and you'll, you'll, you'll say what I tell you to say. Know him as the one who loves you. John 13, verse 1 says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. It's just, <clears throat> it's a beautiful passage. It's John 13 where Jesus is, yes, he's about to be arrested, but before he does, before he gets arrested, he wants to wash his disciples' feet and just teach them one more time about being servants. And, and that's always the way it is with Jesus, isn't it? Hmm? Here he is, <clears throat> and he's, he's going to be arrested and tortured and crucified in a matter of hours. And he just keep plugging away, isn't he? Loving these guys. Loving these guys. So, yep, I bring along this passage just as a reminder that you might have your ups and your downs, but don't think that God loves you any more today because you had a good day than he loved you yesterday when you were acting like a bum. And if you're, you know, if you're the, the, the bum tomorrow and the next day, he doesn't love you less. He keeps loving. His love is an abiding love. And does that, does that cause a sincere Christian to say, well, I'll just continue in sin. If he's just going to keep loving me, then I'll indulge my flesh. Have my cake and eat it too. No, no sincere Christian takes on that kind of mindset. Any, anybody that would say that uh, needs to get born again, don't they? That person's not a saved person. 
But a, a saved person must soundly, soberly consider that the love of God for them isn't dependent upon their performance. Getting to know God better requires us to know what, how he reveals his love or the things about his love that he reveals. And it would certainly include the consistency and the steadfastness of his love. Amen? Amen? <clears throat> no, God is the one who saved you. Matthew 20, verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. I trust that we all, on a real regular basis, take time and commune with the Lord in humble gratitude for the saving life of Jesus Christ, for the shed blood of the Lamb of God. We've got a lot of different needs, a lot of different things to pray for. Life sometimes, sometimes seems to be coming on, coming at us from all directions. Make sure we get to know God as the one who has saved us rescued us. He gave his life a ransom for us. We are the ones that deserved damnation. Maybe life doesn't go your way. Maybe for the whole rest of your life it doesn't go your way. You have good reason still to rejoice every day. Your name's written in the Lamb's book of life because Jesus shed his blood. You've called on his name for the forgiveness of your sins. He's heard your cry and now you're his. And there is nothing that can separate you from his love. Good cause for rejoicing. Amen? Amen? Yeah. He saved you. He has saved you. Rescued you. Do you know you can grow in your appreciation? Your knowledge of, of what you've been saved from and saved to? That's what we're talking about. It's getting to know Jesus better. Probably not a soul here tonight that doesn't know that Jesus saved you. That's great. Yeah. But you can know that more. And we would all be healthier Christians. We all will be healthier Christians as we get to know that more. The Bible says that, um, you know, by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So, anybody here fear the Lord? Anybody here always depart from evil? I think you get the point. We've been saved from damnation. Who wants to go to hell? Who would ever, who would ever you know, consider uh, going back to hell? Who would ever do something that would, that would be wrong, you might say? Like sin. You get to know God, God more, we'll fear him more, won't we? Get him to know the one who prays for you. Feel alone sometimes? Down discouraged? John 17, verse 20, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. We've probably all read that over the years and, and thought, Man, isn't that cool? That Jesus is praying for his people through the ages, isn't he? The disciples would go forth and they'd preach the gospel. And souls would get saved. And those souls would do what? They would preach the gospel and souls would get saved. Right? And among those souls that got saved, yeah, there'd be another generation and another generation and another generation. And Jesus is praying. It's cool to consider that you're a part of the church of Jesus Christ, aren't you? Church universal. And God sees you as part of his body. And he prays for you. Just like he, just like he was praying here, ever lives to make intercession for us, doesn't he? <clears throat> Look at me over to that passage in Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. Get him to know, his, know him as the one who prays for you. From verse 24, but this man 
because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, that is, was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. That's the one you want interceding for you, isn't it? A merciful, faithful high priest with an unchangeable priesthood, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, higher than the heavens. He ever lives to make intercession for you according to the will of God. We sometimes think, boy, you know, I, I, I've got needs. My family's got needs. I want to pray. I, I look to the Lord. I, uh, I, it would be great if I could pray more fervently, pray more effectively, get more answers to my prayers. How much better does the intercession of the Lord Jesus how much better than that does it get? He ever lives to make intercession for us. That doesn't relieve us of the responsibility to pray regarding the matters that we've got before us, does it? But again, we should take great comfort in knowing that he is interceding for us. Working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 He's praying for you. Get him to know as the one, the one who hears you. In Psalm 18, from verse 6, the psalmist writes, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth, devoured, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. You think, wow, if I could get those kinds of results when I prayed. God hears you when you pray. saves to the uttermost those who call on him. His arm is not shortened that it cannot save. Amen? Amen. Saves to the uttermost. Do you believe that? Do you believe that when you call on the name of the Lord, he hears you? Get to know him as the one who hears your cry. Hears when you call on his name. Get to know him and believe that about him. Have a confidence your prayer is heard by God Almighty. Your voice is heard. Get him to know him as the one who teaches you. The one who teaches you. You wonder sometimes, you know, I mean, how am I, really gonna, how am I, how am I going to really make good progress in my walk as a Christian? Jesus is a good teacher. He says in verse 30, Psalm 32, verses 8 and 9, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bitten bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Don't be a hard-headed student. Don't be dull of hearing. He says, I'll instruct thee and teach thee in the way that you should go. Get him to know him as the one who's, who's a teacher. Don't expect him to, to teach you everything your way, your time. But again, you get to know God as one who's teaching you. Amen? He's teaching you, ever teaching you. If you're a born again, if you're here this evening and you are born again, God is teaching you. Be ready to hear. Be ready to learn. Be somebody that pays attention. If you've ever found yourself in the position of instructing <clears throat> and uh, had somebody that was not paying attention, you know that that can 
you know, that can be a little bit uh, irritating, a little frustrating, can't it? You're trying to instruct them in something, something that they need to know, and they're distracted. Well, you know, as they're answering the phone, nodding off, you know, looking all over the room, whatever it might be. He's a good teacher. Allow him to teach you. Know him and have a confidence that he's going to teach you what you need to know and when you need to know it. Amen? What we're doing is we're just talking about getting to know God more, but I wanted to take it from the general of getting to know God and getting to know him in some of these ways. Know him as one who's teaching you. Because through the course of any given day, given day, there are things that you need to learn. God wants to teach us. Amen? Yeah, okay, Lord, I know that you're there to teach me. I don't know how to go out or come on in. I look to you for wisdom, for understanding. I don't even know my own heart. I don't even know to, what, repent, what, what to, to repent of. I don't know how to live as a Christian. Teach me, Lord. Teach me your ways. And he will. He'll do that. <clears throat> get, to him, get to know him as one who corrects you. We looked at this passage over there in Hebrews chapter 12, but I'll read it for us briefly. Verses 5 and 6, a verse that we looked at a couple sessions back in another context. <clears throat> Verses 5 and 6, And have ye forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Well, you might read this and think, well, you know, <clears throat> have I ever been chastened of the Lord? Rebuked of the Lord? Scourged of the Lord? Have you? <clears throat> the Lord has his means of, of getting our attention, doesn't he? Yeah? Yeah? And don't just think it's circumstances went foul. Or, you know, you just uh, didn't get a lucky break today. Consider that sometimes... I'm not saying across the board. Uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll insert. I, I am not teaching that there is an obvious and identifiable one-to-one -one correspondence uh, between every uh, hardship or adversity that you might experience and some specific and readily identifiable uh, sin or failure on your part. No. But the Lord chastens those who he loves. So whether it's uh, because of immaturity, carnality, sin in your life, he has to, you know, do something to get your attention, or if it's just part of the maturation process. He's got more for you, and there's just general carnality that needs to be identified or dealt with. He'll chasten and scourge every son whom he receives. And never is it any more harsh or severe than it needs to be. Amen? You with me there? You know what James teaches there in those first verses of the first chapter, right? Count it all joy when you fall into various kinds of trials. The trying of your faith works patience, perseverance. And that, that kind of trial can, and can be found in this kind of, uh, or categorized here, could fit in this kind of chastening and scourging. That allows things to come our way to work his character into us. Know him that way. Know him <clears throat> as the one who commands you. John 14, 21 and following, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He says elsewhere, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that I tell you to do? He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. I will love him and will manifest myself to him. <clears throat> Verse 23, if a man love me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him. We will come unto him, make our abode with him. He that loveth me not 
keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, Though he were a son, yet <clears throat> learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. This is a reference to Jesus. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Obey him. God commands us. And we obey. Get to know him that way too. Amen? Yeah, like we like to say from time to time, God does not make suggestions. God doesn't make recommendations. God gives his word and it should be considered by us command. Amen? Not up for debate, but to be simply speedily obeyed. The author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14 are very much to the point, aren't they? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Do we get to know Jesus more that way? Hmm? Does Jesus cut you some slack? Huh? Is, is, is Jesus good about cutting you some slack on a regular basis? He knows you had a tough day. He knows that you had a, you know, you did, you did pretty good yesterday. And, uh, and you know, your, your flesh could use a little bit of a break today. Jesus cut you a little slack. You're even under pressure. You're a little tired. Yeah, you know, you, you got a, a headache or something like that. He cuts you a little slack, right? Fear God and keep his commandments. Is that the way you know God? Need to get to know him a little bit better like that? It's the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. <clears throat> know him as the one who judges you. Know him as the one who judges you. I brought along Luke 12, verses 8 and 9. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And he that denieth me before men, shall be denied before the angels of God. We're going to all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account, aren't we? If we confess him before men, he will confess us before the angels and before his Father which is in heaven. If we deny him before men, <clears throat> he'll deny us before his Father and before the angels in heaven, won't he? Yeah. No one is the one who judges. The one before whom you will stand as your judge. And then lastly, know him as the one who's returning for you. Know him as the one that's returning for you. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. There's some good news to finish up with, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. He's coming back again, beloved. And let not your heart be troubled. <clears throat> you know, we started out talking about some folks that I talked with today whose hearts were plainly troubled. And we don't need to be whether it be for, for the things that are taking place in the world at large or things that are taking place in our lives, in our little worlds. No, we don't need to be troubled. Jesus is coming back. And we will spend forever with him. 
And Jesus wants you to know that he wants you with him. He does. He wants you to know that he's looking forward to coming back for you. He knows you and wants you with him. Do you know that? He thinks about you. He's praying for you all the time. And he is very much looking forward to coming back to get you. He is. Very much so. And like you said, sure, you know, it's been a couple thousand years and there are, you know, millions of people that will go home. But God's got a big heart. And he's got the capacity to know us and love us individually and very personally. And he's coming back. He wants you with him. He wants you, he wants you to be where he is. He wants to spend forever and ever with you. You could go through your Bible, and I, and I, and I hope you do. Go through your Bible and, and, and on a, just, man, you're just reading and you're seeing the, the goodness of God. And God is, is, is revealing himself to us. We take the time this evening and we just talk about a, a few uh, aspects of, of, of ways in which we need to get to know God better. Amen? Amen. Truths about God that we do well to think on. Ways in which we can look at our relationship with him. He is a judge. And he's a, he's a corrector. And he's a teacher. And he loves us. And he made us. And... And on. And yes, he's, he's coming back for us. Get to know him more. Life is in Jesus. Get to know him more. He can be known. He's not far off. Don't think of him as far off. I, I'm, I'm like you. It would be nice if, if, uh, if, if I could see him, you know, uh, visibly and, and, uh, and, and I could, whatever, you know, shake his hand or you know, give him a hug or something. Yeah, that would be wonderful. I mean, we think of how wonderful it must have been, you know, to, to, to walk the, you know, the, the hills of, uh, of Galilee back a couple thousand years ago. They had their own set of trials. They're, 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 they're having to wrestle with, you know, this is God incarnate. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's almost, don't you think it's probably easier for us to believe that he's God? Uh, not having to look at, at this, this human form and think, that's God? He wants, to, he wants us to know him. And he, he, he's, he's revealing himself to us. Uh, he, he loves us, knows us, cares for us, and, uh, and, and <clears throat> desires to reveal himself to us ever more fully. And in so doing, then he imparts rich and wonderful life, doesn't he? He sure does. So get to know Jesus. Get to know Jesus. Don't, don't settle for just re religion. Christianity is about relationship. Build that relationship. Amen? Amen. We'll trust the Lord to, to help us. Let's bow our heads before him. Heavenly Father, we do... Thank you for the gift of your son and all the life that is ours in him and through him. Truly in him we live and move and have our being. He that has the son, he that has Jesus, has life. And he that has not the son of God has not life. Here this evening, Lord, most if not all, I believe are born again. And every one of us, Lord, needs to get to know you more. And we can. We can. Wherever there is a desire, you're ready to satisfy it. And not only satisfy it, but nurture a stronger desire. How we thank you for that, Father God. We never want to settle into going through the religious motions. We believe that you do hear and that you've given us the capacity to hear you. You know what we're going through, but in your rich and wonderful mercy, you've not cast us off when we failed. 
you've committed yourself to completing the good work and perfecting that which concerns us. Oh, for all these things, we, we so thank you, Father God. Help us to know Jesus more, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Oh, we thank you for that help, Lord. Let's stand together in Jesus' name and sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're so worthy, O oh Lord God. Lord, we talk about knowing you and it just causes our hearts to rejoice that we do know you and that you can be known. How good you are to have revealed yourself to us, O oh Lord God. To, given us, to have given us the rich and wonderful privilege of knowing you and partaking of your life. We call you Father. And we sing Jesus, our Savior. And we do bless your name, O oh Lord God. Father, now bless these, your people, as they go their way. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, be sure and greet one another in the love of the Lord. God's grace and peace go with you all.